What's up guys? This is part two video of uh, completing the four to five little swap on T-Rex 5.0. My way, my way, in the backyard, my way, you know, uh, I took the rotors off and I went to a parts store and I had a couple of your model late fours in mind to give the, you know, the people at the parts store on rotors. Well, I wasn't successful after getting four ranges rotors, um, the spindle was different than mine's. You know, the spindle was much different. Uh, and then like Crown Vicks and Grand Marquis, same situation, the rotors was like 11 inch or 11 and a half. And my rotors on my Thunderbird is like a 10. So I went through like so many year model fours and compared them to my rotor, compared the bearings, compared the size of the spindle hole, everything. Like, I stayed in the park for like hours and you know, the, the personnel that was helping me was real generous and helpful because you know, they wanted me to actually get this done. And people come in and you know, telling me that, oh, you could get a Ford Ranger uh, front end. Yeah, I, if I do that, I gotta get the whole spindle. I'm not, I'm not trying to change the whole spindle at this point. I just wanna be able to use a five lug rotor replacement Rotor replacement just to slide right on my spindle and be fine without changing the whole spindle out. So maybe some guys out there watching me that done been through this know, but the ones that don't have an 82 Ford Thunderbird and trying to do what I'm doing, maybe they got successful on a uh, SN95 Mustang with the swap, but I'm not trying to change the whole spindle is the idea. Now, if I was changing the whole spindle, Ford Ranger, SN95, all that would work all it will work but I'm not doing that okay so I got in touch with this guy in uh, Ohio now it's the company is called complete breaks well he he's billing me some uh, rotors that's five lugs that'll fit my spindle it's gonna come with the race it's gonna come with the bearing it's gonna come with the grease cap and I found this guy by reading forums online on Google and I sent I, I sent them to him, but also I sent with him some three inch studs. I ordered some three inch studs from Jigs to actually be able to um, since this rim and since this rim that I'm getting has a real it has, it has a 30 offset. So 30 offset means I think that a 30 is rather known as a high offset. So the rim is gonna sit in further under my fender. So therefore, I'm getting longer studs to be able to add like maybe an inch or maybe inch and a half spacer plate between the front rim so I can set the front rim exactly where I want it versus it being too far up under the fender, you know what I'm saying? Or being if I had a rim that had like a low offset, like a 25 offset or 22 offset, the rim will stick out more. And when it's out, it's out. You can't get it back in. So by me, having a, 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 a high offset, 30, it's gonna push the rim in, then I can use my spacers to pull, pull it out. So that's what the long stud is gonna be for. So uh, I should be receiving uh, those here in the next next couple of days. So once I receive them, uh, I will be slapping them on and possibly showing y'all the installation video. And I'm not quite sure how far I may go with that. I might take it all the way to me actually, you know, put getting my wheels installed and what it's gonna take for me to get the tire fitment that I want. Uh, because I'm just basically just guessing on tire sizes because at this point, this is not a car that everybody rides around and, and call a local rim shop and say, hey, I got an 82 Ford Thunderbird. I wanna put these rims on there. Uh, what size tire should I run? Uh, what offset should I put on there? It's not that simple, guys, because this is an old car. That is, it they don't even have fitments for it for a five lug rim. So therefore, I'm having to convert something myself. There ain't nobody out here that I can get an idea from. You know what I'm saying? On this right here, it's just kind of like me measuring my fender walls, knowing what's gonna work, and also with me going to like a local warehouse that I deliver to, I deliver tires to. I'm communicating with the guy back and forth. He's sending me pictures until I go back there so I can look at some tires and basically go by 
how thick I want them, how tall I want them, so on, so on, in that various, various uh, ratio or whatever. So I appreciate you guys for following along with me, the ones that, that watched my first video. I really appreciate it. And uh, for the other guys that have, ha haven't had time to watch it, you know, shame on you. You know, I see most people choose what they want to watch. But if you're a fan of Hot Bay 601, you're going to watch whatever I put up. Because if you want to know what I'm doing, then that's what's up. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. You know, it's not all. It's not always about a system like what people got. A system like you know, open y'all minds up a little bit. Like be be more competitive to new things and learning new things, new topics and stuff. You know, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Like I love car audio, but at the same time, I love fixing up stuff. I love actually making shit works. I just love it. You know what I'm saying? I love mastering things that I think about in my head that I can later on put down with my hands and make it happen. So I just challenge, you know, I just challenge y'all, you know what I'm saying? To be more engaged with more things that I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Rock with me if you're rocking with me because like, you know, some of these things I generally don't even have to show you. But like I said, I just do it out the grace of my heart just because of the fact that I feel like y'all take pride in me just like I take pride in you all. But I'm not gonna talk your head off. But the reason why I'm sitting at Blow Through F-150 is I had a couple of tweeters that, you know what I'm saying, that was either crackling or just been in here too long. So I just kind of went through all of them and changed them, changed, changed out all what I could that I had, you know, in my stories that I had left. But like I said, the next video, y'all will see me unboxing the rotors and maybe installation and then so on and so on. So until then, uh, we're gonna tag along and link this with the next video. What's up, what's up? All right, this is the box I've been waiting on. With T-Bird 5.0 front, four to a five look conversion. Place uh, out of Ohio, complete break. Uh, was able to redrill me some rolls that'll fit my spindle. I can't get in this like this. I might have to put this camera down and come back. All right, guys, here we go. We got one of them out. So that's my five lug rotors. The studs are a little bit long. So I got them long for a purpose. The offset for the wheels that I'm running is a very low offset, 30 offset. So, and, I'm, and I got them a low, well, should I say a high offset, a high offset, meaning it sit in further. So I got my studs longer just in case if I want to put like a small half inch space on there, I have enough studs to tighten the wheel down. But all this gooey stuff. There's the other one. I'm gonna mount these on the car, but I'm not gonna show y'all the video of me actually doing it. gonna do everything I need to do. But we'll come back and show y'all after I install them. Alright, so here's my old stud that come out of there. If you can just see the thread on that. Well, just imagine if it knocked in, but let's see. I guess it's probably gonna be about like that. So I got that much more stud, well, that much more thread on there. Yeah. So that was my idea to get longer ones, to run those spacers, to bypass the spindle. This side up, I haven't put that one on yet. That one's still off. I got the car way up, so that way, when I get ready to mount the wheels, I can just, I can load them up, lock them all in, and then I got my floor jack back here in the middle. I'll mount the back first, then I'll mount the front, and then I jack the back up, lower down. Well, once I get all the wheels on the car, then I'll start removing uh, the jack stains. Okay guys, I got one installed. 
you know, these are my plates, my spacer plates that I'm gonna run. So this is why I got the <laughs> extended three inch studs. Yeah, I got the extended three inch studs just in, just in case, like I said, if I wanna pull the wheel out because my 17 that I had on here, I was test fitting it and I had probably about a half of an inch, not even a half of an inch, man, between the, the strut and the back of the rim. It was kind of like almost touching, but it wasn't touching. So, so the rim that I'm putting on here is, uh, has the same offset as the 17, um, a very high offset, which is a 30 millimeter offset. So like I said, these plates right here, I'm gonna use to uh, push the wheel out. And if, if you all wanna know where I got these from also, like I said, just comment and ask and I'll tell you. But that one is that one. And this one is this one. So this is how I'm gonna put it. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna go, let's turn this on the flat side this way. And uh, I will be putting Loctites on these wheels, but you see how much stud I'm gonna have after the rim sets on there. So that's, that was the reason for extended studs to run these. Most people don't even run extended studs when they do spacers and the wheel end up running off. So, but like I said, I'm not gonna be driving this car like this on the highway. It's pretty much just gonna be a trailer queen and just, you know, just local. If I decide to drive it local, you know, that's all it's gonna be. But that's what that looks like. Uh, I will be actually steam cleaning all this right here. Spray me some degrees on it, get all this old, old paint and gunk out of here and uh, repaint it back with some fresh paint. Yeah, I did add some, some coil uh, levelers or whatever. The reason why I did that is because <clears throat> years ago, I had these springs cut on this car so it could sit low. So with the uh, wheels that I'm running, I want to make sure I have good clearance. I have good clearance. No, I'm not going to be sitting up high. Not gonna, don't even think that. I'm not lifting the car or anything. The car's still going to be going to be sitting low, but I just kind of want some good stability uh, because I don't know how far my wheels are going to come out. Well, I do know. I do know how far. They, they're going to be even with this fender. I'm going to say that. But still, like with the car, I don't know if it'll kind of touch the top of the wheel, you know what I'm saying, when I go in the deal. But that's that. So like I said, we're gonna do the other side. And then, like I said, we're moving forward. We're moving forward with this. We're moving forward. Um, I'm making my dream become reality. And that's the whole idea of this build, t rex 5.0, making a lot of things possible that I I never could get done back in the day because I was I was either scared to tackle it myself or either people told me that, that it couldn't be done or they just didn't give me the proper information that I needed to actually uh, further what I wanted to do with T-Bear 5.0. So, like I said, uh, we'll be back with the other installation. Um, I'm not gonna do it today. Probably one of this weekend. I put the other side on, and we'll see what happens after that. What's up, guys? I'm on my way to FedEx and to pick up two of the wheels for T Bear 5.0. I recently already purchased two wheels to make sure the fitment that I'm doing would work. You know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't you know, it wasn't a good idea for me to actually purchase all four of the wheels and not sure if what I'm trying to make work is gonna work. So I'm going to pick up the, uh, the other two wheels right now before I put on my mask to go up in here. And I just want to let y'all know what I'm about to do when I get them loaded up. I'll come back and let y'all see them loaded up. This is the work day. So I'm just going before work, pick them up because I don't want them to leave them at my house outside the door, garage, or whatever, and 
not sure if some crew could come through and snatch him. I ain't got time for those problems, but we are here and I'm not sure where I need to park it. I'm just gonna park out here and just Right in the little door thing right there. I'm gonna park in a spot that I ain't even put no car because I ain't walking that far. Okay, guys, we got the wheels picked up. There's the two boxes right there. Got them loaded, so we're going. We're gonna move on. All right, guys. A little vlogging for y'all. I'm finna pick up my tires for T-Bird 5.0. At this warehouse I deliver to all the time. It's a big warehouse down here. See all those tires? Go ahead and pick my tires up. We're getting close to putting T-Bird 5 all together. Long time in coming. Been working on this car for years and finally doing things to it that I want to do to it with my thinking head, just my thinking cap I've been putting on. But I'm gonna go right in here and pay cash for some tires and, and we're gonna load them up and get going. What's that school? Yeah. I'm gonna holler when I come back. Uh, well, I'm not, I'm not gonna this school real quick. Okay, okay. I was, I was just gonna show you what I was working on. Okay. But I can show it to you when I get back, when I come back next time. Uh, well, how long, how long not long, what I'm saying, I know I gotta come back. Okay. So all these tires, y'all. Tire heaven. Any size you want. So I'm not so big, you, you can't even really see over one of them. But that's pretty much what it looks like. All right, we're gonna get my tires. There are some tires right here, but they're not mine. Let's look at them. All right, guys, got the tires picked up. There they are, four of them. I know y'all curious about what size they are, but you see them. <laughs> you just have to wait till I get them on the ground, baby. But that's what's up. What's up, guys? So it's Saturday morning. Um, the next day after I picked the tires up from the warehouse, T-Bird 5.0. So the wait is over. So I'm headed to a tie shop right now. It's about 6.30. Saturday morning, I'm gonna head to the tie shop real quick and be there about seven o'clock before they open up and uh, go ahead and get these, get these tires mounted on these wheels. Um, still haven't revealed the wheels yet. So, we're just gonna put y'all peek. I don't feel anything, you just see tread. That's all you see. We're gonna pet the pupper again. What's up, fat boy? What's up, hey, to my YouTube family? He loves dick pain. Good job. So what's up? Say I'm a chai bear. Say I'm a chai, chai bear. I'm a chai bear purple. You got food and water? All right, that's enough. See you later. Oh yeah, that's how we sitting right now on all four jack stands. I took time last night and uh, steam clean and washed, well not steam clean, but I sprayed some degrees in the fender, got all that old grease out. 
I'm gonna stop by the parts store and get me some uh, black brake uh, caliber paint. And then I'm just gonna spray the whole fender well with the uh, caliper paint and need the back also. It looks pretty clean. If I had a steam, if I had a, a actual steam clean, I could have got all that old paint off, but I'm satisfied with that. And we are mounted up guys. T Bird 5.0 is all mounted up, so on to the next project. Finna hit the Walmart and get me some paint so I can paint my fender wells. And I thought I decided to do my fender wells flat black. It looks way cleaner. Uh, you know, it just look way cleaner. I mean, over the years, I did the gloss black. So I'm gonna get some Krylon flat black and even I'm gonna flat black the uh, calipers also. So that's what I'll be doing. So the next next um, episode coming up, you'll see me actually, should I should have the fender, fender wells all painted. And we'll see you then. All right, just left Walmart. Got my pupper, some dog food, and I got me three cans of uh, Krylon flat black paint. And this is the paint I use to paint under the hood of T-Bird 5.0 when I redid the engine bay. So you see what kind of ideal I'm, I'm looking for. You know what I'm saying? Just a clean, low key, no gloss look. So there's the paint back there. So any of you guys want to paint your fender wells or paint your sidewalls under your hood or paint the sidewalls in your trunk, flat black would be the way to go. You know what I'm saying? It'd be the way to go. One thing about it, you can always go back over it with the flat, flat black, you know, several months later and it will just actually add to the look looks of it. So we're going to get home and we're going to start spraying. And, uh, Cut you back on when I finish getting all the fenders well painted up. Then I'm gonna let the fenders well dry for a few hours and then I'm gonna mount the wheels up. And probably clean the car up a little bit, you know, cause I got a lot of junk thrown on top of it. So that's gonna pretty much be it. So whoever's rolling with me, watching this adventure that I'm going through right here, get T-Bread 5.0 uh, situated, I appreciate you. Uh, share this video, subscribe to my channel if you're not, and we will see you back. Okay, guys, so that's I took one can and I did all four fender wells, and I bought three cans, so I'm gonna go back over with one more can, give it a little time to dry. But that's what it looks like flat black, has a, has a real low gloss to it, it's flat black, it's kind of. Paint got me high. High. See how it's got a low gloss? That's that look I was looking for. Not no shiny look. That's the low gloss look. Make it look clean on the fender wells. So I'm gonna go back over with one more can. <clears throat> then I'm gonna let it dry for an hour, or two, or three. Then I'll, I'll slap the wheels on. Okay, guys. We got the second coat on. Like I said, we're gonna let it dry now for an hour. I'm gonna chill for a while and then come back. What's up? Your boy is tired. T-Bear 5 on those finished. I just washed it, cleaned it up. And I'm just taking a break. Um, first of all, look, I want to encourage all of you all, if y'all didn't watch the transformation of me converting t 5.0 to 4 to 5 look, the first video I put up, I put up, I'm going to put a link in the description. Also, when this video is done, it's going to recommend you to go back and watch the first video if you missed it, if you just jumped to this one. So you can see how hard I've been working on this car. Okay, so first of all, I want to thank Gregory. It's a dude named Gregory in uh, Katy, Texas. Uh, the hook me with my wheels. He had faith in me when I called him. You know what I'm saying? I was telling him what I had going on, how long I had the car, what I've been wanting to do, what I'm trying to make work. 
he had faith in me. As soon as he heard my voice, as soon as he, as soon as he heard me speak, he, he was like, man, I know you're gonna make this happen. So he sent me one back rim and one front rim. And I called him back a couple days later and told him I was confident, but I was also waiting on the front rotor from this guy in Ohio, which I want to thank Brad in Ohio at Custom Brakes that hooked me up my front rotors and made it happen for me. And all the parts that I ordered from Jigs and the back spacer that I got off eBay, well, the back adapter that I got off eBay. Um, like I said, if anybody want to know any information about any of the parts that I'm using to make this happen, like I say, uh, email me at my contact. That's, that's a thing up 303 yahoo.com or it's in my YouTube description or just leave a comment in the bottom if you really want to know like what all I did to get this to work and uh, if you got an 82 full of Thunderbird or if you got a full of Thunderbird that's not an 82 but that's uh, the, the body style after that one you know I'll tell you exactly everything I did right here in my backyard uh, which like I said everybody told me what I can't do and what I need to do but I did what I want to do my money my time well spent I'm confident with it I'm happy that I went the route that I did because the way my car is sitting the stance is phenomenal uh, we're gonna I'm gonna show it to you in a minute but I just want to take time just to thank those people uh, for getting me the parts quick that I wanted you know what I'm saying um, just small touch-ups man so we're gonna get out of this truck and we're gonna let y'all look at it. All right, here she go. 20 by 10s on the back. I'm not gonna speculate the offset. You know, if you if you wanna know, you have to ask me. That's a 20 by 10 in the back with a 285, 25, 20. Rubber band in the back, 285, 25, 20. I could have won a 295. But I wasn't sure, and actually, I got my air shocks dropped on them. But I wanted to sit lower in the back than the front. Okay, on the front here, I'm running a 255, 30, 20. 255, 30, 20 on an eight and a half. Like I said, offset, you know what I'm saying? Different ball game. Different ball game with the offset. So how she's sitting on the side, that's how she's sitting. The front tire is flush with the fender. And the back tire sits in just a tad, but you can't tell it. When looking at the wheel, when you look at the car, you can tell that the back, the front, the front tire meets the fender before the back does, but the back is straggled. From not 305, 302 bolt out rather. But that's basically the most part of it, guys. Um, I'm tired, so I'm just kind of taking my time, torquing the uh, the nuts down. I put Loctite on all, all my all my uh, nuts, and I'm probably gonna drive it probably here tomorrow. And then after so many miles, I'm just gonna get out and check them again. But I'm very happy with it. Very very pleased with it. So next step is I gotta find me a painter. Gotta find me a painter. Then first I gotta, I'm gonna get this windshield replaced. Cause I don't wanna put no painter head paint on it and then trying to get this windshield replaced cause it's all cracked up from bases over the years. Like I said, I had, I've had low base in this car. Uh, I was blowing shirts and blowing hair before I even knew about how tricks when I had 415s in this car. I mean, I was blowing dresses up and stuff, man. But the only, only reason I changed the sound of the bass is because I was more of a, pull up nose to nose and crank them up let's see who the loudest so that's that's why i changed my setup that's why i'm high back 601 that's why i call myself high back 601 of course but like i said i always want to be heard from a long way versus being up close shaking and rattling and shaking the windshield so this is not built for a hat tricker it's built to play loud and get people attention from outside the car cry pleaser that's what I call her, a crowd pleaser. That's what she is. So if you never heard it, when you hear it, you're gonna see why I call her a crowd pleaser. But anyway, back to the wheel setup. Now, the reason why I picked these wheels, I didn't want chrome. I wanted a gun metal, I wanted a machine, was because you see all the machines on this car. 
it probably used to be chrome at one time, but it's kind of like a machine uh, door look. So I wanted a wheel that would, that would coordinate with the trimmings that I have on the car other than chrome. And also, the fact that I chose gray, I didn't want black. I don't like black that much. Plus, I wanted a wheel that would break up the black top, the color that I'm gonna paint the car, and then the wheels being gray. I didn't want the wheels to be black, car color, and then black here. I want it to be broke up. I want that gray to kind of kind of offset and break up everything that's going on with the car. But here she is, but if you're new to my channel, if you're wondering what's in this car, there's 418s in here. And a bunch of door speakers, and a bunch of tweeters, and a bunch of amps, and a bunch of wires, and a bunch of alternators, a bunch of voltage, a bunch of chrome up under the hood. I think she's ready for a mom and pop car show. What y'all think? Even unfinished, she's ready for a mom and pop car show. But there she is. Not gonna make this video too long, but to the initial part, like I said, all thumbs up if you're watching this video right here, that's for and you're looking at my car. Comment in the comment if you think I did a good job. And like I said, just keep keep following me, keep watching me, you know? Like I always say, I never know what I'm gonna come up with. I never know what I'm gonna show y'all. So, like I said, this right here could have been kept all the secret, but I'm sharing it with you all. So, yes, I will be at Strapping the Coast and t bird 5.0 and the Blow 2 F-150. So if you want to get a demo of both of these vehicles, you know, come holler at me and let me know that you watched this video and I'll give you the best demo that you ever had or that I ever gave, in other words. But um, this car is ready. Like I said, Boltage is on point. Brand new wheels and tires. And engine bay redone. So this is the best time of t bird 5.0 life. I mean, I'm bringing her back. Like, you know, I did the car. I painted the car, man, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna even lie. I'm just gonna keep it real. I probably, I think it was like early 90s when I painted this car. It was a it was a, a black cherry color with flakes. Well, it's you can see that burgundy a little bit right there, but it's not black all the way. It's kind of like a burgundy base to it. But when the sun hit it, it looked burgundy and brown with flakes. But the color's black cherry, it was a forward color. So, uh, those are in the early 90s. And then I, I had to put wire wheels on the car. But that was it. Honestly, ever since I had this car, I had it since like high school, like 11th grade. I only put two set of tires on it. One set of tires on the, on the first set of wire, wire rims that I bought. And then later on, I put some needles on the, the, those same wire wheels. So this is the third time this car has had new treads by me being an owner and not to mention my brother gave me this car in high school so he's been watching everything i've been doing to it so and i know he's he's either two things he's happy that i'm doing it or he wants it back <laughs> so i'm just gonna say that um but like i said yeah i'm very happy with it y'all i just kind of rinsed it off a little bit just to get some of the dust and oil from the period of time i had tools and everything thrown on top of it but there she sits T-Bread 5.0, living up to the name. All muscle and sound. T-Bread 5.0, that's why I named it T-Bread 5.0 because offset wheels, engine, and another reason too, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this and then I'm gonna end this video. T-Bread 5.0, the name come from when I first put a 302 in this car, it had a 4.2 in it. When I put a 302 in it and I put Flowmaster exhaust on it, Everybody back in the day in my neighborhood used to thought when I was coming over the hill, coming up the road, they thought I was a Mustang. They thought I was a Mustang. And that right there kind of sat in my heart, man. Like, man, people said my car sound like a Mustang. And so from then, I started calling the T-Bird 5.0. And that's what it is. All right, guys. I'm done with this video. So like, comment, subscribe. Done. About their bad bitch, it's about their pretty car, taking long trips and smoking big cigars. It's about that shoe chain, it's about that new chain, it's about that fresh breath, it's about helping yourself, it's about what's in your heart, it's about if you got heart.